This video is brought to you by Incogni. The EU and Hungary really don't get along. Many EU members have always been uncomfortable with Viktor Orban's self-styled illiberal democracy. And Orban, probably the most pro-Russia leader in Europe, has reliably undermined the EU's efforts to support Ukraine. The most recent disagreement has come over a proposed multi-billion financial aid package for Kyiv, and on Sunday the Financial Times reported that the EU was considering a drastic new plan that would basically involve crippling Hungary's economy if Orban didn't back down. While the EU has since tried to distance itself from the report, this hasn't gone down well in Hungary, and the stage is set for a furious showdown at the upcoming Leaders' Summit on Thursday. So in this video we're going to explain Hungary's opposition to Ukrainian aid, the EU's new plan to blackmail Hungary, and what might happen next. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So this story really begins in early December, when ahead of the EU's Leaders' Summit on December the 14th, Hungary said it would veto both the EU's plans to open accession negotiations with Ukraine and send Kyiv more economic aid. Specifically, a 50 billion euro Ukraine facility proposed back in October to guarantee Kyiv with funding until 2027. It's hard to overstate quite how important this money is to Ukraine, given its current financial struggles and the fact that American financial aid is being held up in Congress as part of an ongoing dispute between the White House and Republicans over the southern border. This didn't come as a total surprise, given Orban's history of obstructionism in the EU and close relations with Moscow. For context, Orban has always had relatively chummy relations with Putin, and repeatedly opposed sanctions against Russia since its annexation of Crimea in 2014. Orban is now the only EU leader to have shaken hands with Putin since February 2022, and not to have visited Kyiv in this period. While Hungary denied this, it's also very possible Orban was trying to leverage his veto to get the EU to release some of the structural funds which the EU are currently withholding from Hungary. Structural funds are basically the money the EU gives member states to support social and economic development, and they usually account for over a third of the overall budget. Last December, the EU withheld 22 billion euros due to Hungary over concerns regarding the rule of law, corruption and the misuse of previous funds by Orban's government, specifically EU agricultural subsidies. Anyway, somewhat surprisingly, at the summit the EU were able to open accession negotiations, apparently because, after three hours of deadlock, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz told Orban to leave the room during the actual vote. Ukraine's accession required unanimity, but EU rules say that technically, if just one leader is absent but all the others vote for the motion, that still counts. Which means the EU could open accession negotiations while Orban could still say he hadn't voted for it. However, Orban still admittedly refused to sign off on more economic aid. So the EU scheduled another emergency leaders summit for February the 1st to try and convince him. Unfortunately for Ukraine, various attempts by other European leaders throughout January failed to convince Orban, so the EU came up with a new, more dramatic plan to get him to agree to the aid, which was leaked to the Financial Times on Sunday evening. According to the Financial Times, if Orban were to veto Ukraine's financial aid, then the other EU leaders would all release public statements declaring that, in the light of Orban's quote, unconstructive behaviour, they cannot imagine any EU funds being provided to Budapest in the future. Now, this might not sound that dramatic, but the idea is that, by vowing to cut off funding, the EU will spook international markets and investors, which will, in turn, make it even more difficult for Hungary to finance its public spending. The document, obtained by the FT, explicitly mentions Hungary's economic vulnerabilities, including its high public deficit, high inflation, weak currency, debt servicing costs, and the fact that many Hungarian jobs rely on international investment, which is, in turn, predicated on high levels of EU funding. For context, Hungary has been borrowing a lot of money recently in an attempt to stimulate the economy out of a year-long recession that began in mid-2022. While many European states experienced recessions in 2022, most of them got out of them relatively quickly. But Hungary's potential recovery has been hampered by persistently high inflation, 
which peaked above 25% in early 2023 and is still running above 5%. This combination of low growth and high inflation, sometimes known as stagflation, has been pretty catastrophic for the Hungarian economy, and Orban has been spending, and therefore borrowing, lots of money to try and get the economy back on track. In 2023, the Hungarian state ran a budget deficit representing 5.9% of GDP, well above Hungary's 3.9% target, the EU's 3% target, and neighbouring peer economies like Slovenia and Czechia. Like most states, Orban relies on international markets to fund these deficits, i.e. he needs international investors to buy Hungarian bonds. So the EU's plan is to essentially undermine confidence in Hungary's ability to pay its debts, deterring international investors from buying Hungarian debt and pushing the Hungarian budget into a doom loop, where rising borrowing costs undermine its ability to service its debts, which spooks investors, which further increases borrowing costs. Unsurprisingly, this plan hasn't gone down well in Hungary. Janos Boka, Hungary's EU minister, rejected the connection between support for Ukraine and access to EU funds, and told the Financial Times that Hungary does not give in to pressure. In a sense, Hungary's response is understandable. This is perhaps the most drastic action the EU has ever taken against one of its own member states, and an EU official even described it as blackmail to the Financial Times. On the other hand, the EU would probably justify the severity of their response by pointing to the urgency of Ukraine's funding shortfall, and the fact that Orban has been using his various vetoes to blackmail the EU for years. Nonetheless, whoever side you're on, this clearly represents a worrying new low in EU-Hungary relations, and it's an open question whether or not the relationship can recover from here. So, what happens next? Well, if anything, the leak seems to have made a compromise less likely not more. Having sent a new proposal to the EU on Saturday, the day before the leak, a few hours after the leak, Boca took to Twitter to attack, quote, Brussels bureaucrats and insist that Hungary does not give in to blackmail. For context, Hungary has previously said it could support the aid package being folded into the EU budget if it was given an annual veto on the payments. This already looked unlikely because other EU states rejected this on the grounds that it would just give Orban yet another recurring veto. But now looks even less likely, given it would look like Hungary had been successfully blackmailed into a U-turn. If nothing's agreed, the 26 other member states have a plan B to send the aid outside the EU budget, but this would require long-winded and contentious ramification from national parliaments. Now, while you've been learning about EU-Hungary relations in this video, you might not realise that shady forces are working in the background to collect personal data from various sites and bundle it all together ready to sell on to a third party. Now, these data brokers can sell this bundle of information about you to anyone from a company to an online criminal. Now, while you might assume that you're safe online, perhaps you change your password regularly, or perhaps you're a hawk and always uncheck that little box that signs you up to annoying newsletters. Unfortunately, this doesn't completely save you. Companies that hold your data can still fall victim to a data breach, meaning that these data brokers can still compile information about you to sell on to others. Now, this is where our sponsor Incogni comes in. They reach out to these data brokers on your behalf, request that your data is removed, and deal with any problems that might arrive. In fact, they're tenacious, and will put in multiple data removal requests even after your data's been removed to make sure that it doesn't go back on the market. So, create an account with our link in the description, grant Incogni the ability to work on your behalf, and sit back as they make you safer. Plus, by using our link, you'll get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks for Incogni for sponsoring this video.